So hi everyone and welcome to this uh, short uh, video on Jensen's inequality, which is a concept that we're going to discuss in our overall module on decision making under uncertainty. So before we get to that concept, let's review what we tackled in the last video. And in the last video, we derived this graph here and we showed that um, uh, how to derive this expected utility function, how it looks like graphically. And we came up with a couple of conclusions, which we'll review. So um, since uh, the W naught, and just to recall, W naught is like a certain wealth. So it's like a certain wealth. So suppose a consumer doesn't uh, engage in the gamble, he or she will automatically have W naught. And W naught is halfway between W naught plus H, which is the payoff, payoff, when you win the gamble, when you win. So in essence, the amount that you win is H. So your wealth increases by H. And if you lose the gamble, it's W naught minus H. So this is payoff, uh, in this case, a negative payoff when you lose, okay, when you lose. And what you'll notice is that the expected utility of the certain wealth is also halfway between the utility, uh, if you evaluate the utility function in the amount of W naught plus H, and if you evaluate the utility function in the amount W naught minus H. So let's go back at that and let's just see that. So notice um, we have W naught uh, minus H here. So that's this part there. Then we have an upper bound, which is uh, W naught plus H. And then we have here our expected utility of wealth, which is equal to this one. And it's somewhere in between these two bounds that we have there, okay? So th that's uh, the me meaning of the first bullet. And clearly, we see that the utility, uh, something that you should notice in this particular graph is that this value here, this utility that you get from a certain wealth, okay, that particular utility you get from a certain wealth, Okay, so picture it in your head, remember it, is greater than this part, which is um, the expected utility of wealth. So notice this is just us calculating for the expected utility using the formulas we've discussed in the past videos. And therefore, the individual will prefer his sure current wealth to the wealth combined with a fair gamble that has this exact same expected wealth value. And this just means that the risk averse individual will generally reject a fair gamble. And this is what we've been saying for a couple of videos now. If an individual were presented with the option to engage in a fair gamble, he or she would likely reject the fair gamble as an alternative. So, and would just prefer well, having a certain wealth. Okay, so the main thing we're gonna discuss in this video is this concept called Jensen's inequality. And all that Jensen's inequality is, is it's sort of like a proof that people do not necessarily like risk. They like certain things more. And in general, with a strictly concave function, so note this is a key requirement, with a strictly concave utility function, then for any fair gamble in any wealth level W, so that's the initial wealth plus the payoffs, then the utility of the expected wealth should be greater than the expected utility of wealth. And all that this is saying is that the expected utility of wealth with the fair gamble is less than the utility associated with the expected value of wealth with the fair gamble. Now, remember in a fair gamble, the payoff is essentially zero, right? Because the uh, getting it is um, getting a win or a loss is exactly the same proportion and the two payoffs will cancel out. Thus, you're left with the expected value of your initial wealth or whatever stock of wealth you have. Typically, it's set to zero, but then in some cases, it is some defined wealth. And all that this is saying is that a rational risk averse individual should not participate or um, in or refuse a particular fair gamble. So just to illustrate that a bit, okay, so um, say we're just going to recall the concept um, we discussed uh, a bit earlier. So say I'm going to draw that utility function again. So this is u, w, okay, that, that axis there will be for utility. This one will be for w. Say I have expected value of w here. Okay, so that's the expected value of wealth. Okay, 
uh, the utility level associated with that okay, is going to be this one. Okay, so say those perfectly align. Okay, I have here, this is the utility of the expected value of wealth, right? Because I'm evaluating this monetary amount to utility. Then all that this is saying is that according to Jensen's inequality, right? When we start to compute for the payoff, of course, it could be E W plus H, right? Or it could be E W minus H, right? It could be somewhere there. So we could have an outcome here, or we can have an outcome here. Then to do that, we draw a chord between the two points. Okay, so some chord there. And if we plot this next to that, okay, so this one will be the, uh, that pink one will be the expected utility of wealth. And what we obviously notice from this is that um, the utility of the expected wealth, right, is greater than the expected utility of wealth. And basically, that's Jensen's inequality uh, in a simple proof, in a graphical proof. And as we go along, we'll see how uh, Jensen's inequality can factor into further concepts, such as what we have called the certainty equivalent. So um, it will, in the next video, we'll discuss an actual example of these things. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for your attention.